Today we are reviewing the Mono Red Lightning Aggro Challenger deck for 2019. friends how are we doing hope we're doing well uh today we have a good one for you another review we're going to review the mono red challenger deck for 2019 um this one this one seems somewhat strong purely because mono red seems to be somewhat strong in general this is not though the most optimized and if you stick around to the end of the video i will give you some recommendations so if you do buy this challenger deck you will uh, there's a couple of cards that i highly recommend to put into it that should be cheap enough uh, that they're not going to break the bank uh and it should be a good deck to play uh on friday night magic or any other you know get together or anything like that with your friends the thing is it's mono red and people don't like it so you're gonna have to deal with that uh but that will not be in my review score no, no social uh, pressure or peer pressure will be given in the final score of this deck but let's go ahead and get into the deck and we'll go and talk a little bit about what is good and what's not good first of all fanatical firebrand the lava runner shock lightning strike runaway steam can the pyromancer wizards lightning and probably an experimental frenzies which you'll find in the tier one version most of the time experimental frenzy sometimes you won't run that sometimes you will it just depends on kind of what kind of version you're playing uh but there are some interesting main decking um pieces that i would like to point out one is the lava coil uh and number two is the bane fire Normally, most of the time, these two cards are not in the main deck of a mono red, uh, purely because in the beginning you're trying to just burn your comp your opponent as fast as bloody possible. However, in this specific version, it looks like what they wanted to do when they constructed it was to kind of give it a little bit of a balance against some aggro, excuse me, against some control types. But that's how you build this is kind of up to you i would just go straight up aggro even in a best of three um, and have bane fire rekindling phoenix and lava coils on the sideboard and we'll get to the sideboard in a minute but that's kind of what i would do goblin chain whirler in my personal opinion i would not run four but that is okay in this specific version they have four we also are running a nope, that i think we hit everything hit the shock as well so cool and we're running 22 lands now i will like to point out that if this is a review for the mtg arena version um i am going to recommend not having this many mountains but we'll get to that in the section of recommendations later in the video for now we have 22 mountains let's look at the sideboard real quick Lightning Mare, Diamond Mare, Fiery Cannonade, and Fight with Fire. So this card right here, I'm I'm not 100% sure, and this could be that I'm not a high professional player. I'm just a great casual player who enjoys the game. However, Fight with Fire seems out of place in a lot of ways, but again, it could be a fantastic addition in a multitude of different type of matchups. To me, I would have placed a lot of other things in the sideboard. Completely honest with you, removing all four and adding some other things is different. Is kind of what I would go. Fiery, a fiery cannonade makes a lot of sense. You do have a, a decent amount of pirates in your deck, and removing two uh, is going to be really good against some mid-range matchups that you might face. Diamond Mare is great if you're, you know, if you think this would be useful to run in maybe a um, Mira mono red or mono blue matchup. Uh, and then Lightning Mare is great against control, just in general. This is what I usually sideboard um, for control, purely because it can't be countered, and it's going to have to be a creature that uh, is removed with hard removal uh, pretty quickly because you can technically just put one or two of these on the board and not have to really play anything else except your burn, and control matchups are going to have to deal with it. So it's not a horrible addition, especially um, at its cost. It's not... It's not really an expensive card to purchase. So so that's really the deck. Um, let's get into some games to see how it deals, shall we? All right, our first game of the deck. Let's go first. 
that looks okay. That looks this looks like a very fine start to a mono red deck. Um, we'll see how this how this goes, shall we? Oh no, cancel! Always don't y'all don't do as I say, not as I do. Don't do that. I'm very inter. I played with some games before uh, we started here. I'm very interested uh, to see um, just how we'll go ahead and do this. How this deck fares against other tier one, tier two decks. I did face a uh, Esper Control, and they did pretty well against me. Uh, I lost two games to O, and then I also beat a another control deck, but it was a weird Sultai Control. So I, we'll see how this goes. I'm very interested to see. Uh, this is a gate deck, so this is also another very interesting thing to see. Let's we'll go ahead and shock face. We'll try to burn them as fast as possible now. That's a good draw, I guess. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and lightning strike first to give this guy two of and attack. Not too bad so far. This is just good old fashioned mono red. If we can draw the fourth land, this in the experimental frenzy will be a doozy of a card for us to have. It's going to help us out. Um, but there's no red mana here, which is good. Ooh, wait a minute. What is going on here? What is going on here? Okay. I think the play is just we're going to kill the Firebrand, kill the 2 1. Attack with the Lava Runner. And end the turn. I can cast both Lightning Strike and Wizard uh, Lightning on their turn. So I'm not really necessarily worried about that right now. And I kind of want to see what they do before I play these two. A lot of times if you're running instants, it's really good to save them on their turn because your opponent can make mistakes without knowing what you have done. See, this is fine. And now I'm just going to go ahead and do this to the face because it's quite possible if they knew I had those two cards in my hand, they wouldn't have made this play. But I don't know. Um, this is what I'm doing. I do not have a four mana spell currently. Uh, excuse me, a four damage spell. This is a completely useless card, as you can see. And we did not draw a land either. They could easily turn it around now. Uh, they're still one mana away from playing the angel that heals them for two for every guild gate that they have. And that can be a problem. This is a good card. I'll go ahead and play it. And I'll pass. Next turn, if they cannot remove both of these, I do have lethal. And if they cannot heal, I have lethal. Heal. Uh, unfortunate. Still, it's still not all is lost. If they play the angel, we're basically done. This is also extremely bad. Uh, I don't think there's anything that's going to help us now. Maybe if I draw a land here and I can Experimental Frenzy, I can find enough damage to kill the face. But we'll see. No land here. Probably going to concede and go to straight to the sideboard. They're going to play another Guild Summit, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Well, technically that doesn't really matter to us. Uh, purely because there's nothing we can really do anyway. Okay. It's good that we draw this card. Necessarily don't need it. Um, and if there's another land, that's going to help us. We'll see. I do believe 22 lands is too many. In an MTG Arena style deck. But 22 for a... Normal, no crazy algorithm uh, deck. We only have one more turn, so if we can double lava coil here, maybe. Oh, and that never mind. This is in my hand, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, we're probably dead anyway. I'm just gonna see what's in this, what's in the uh, deck. P 
securely to kind of see, uh, have a little bit better feel of the deck as we move in and review it. Okay. There is no need for me. Actually, this is, so we're still going to look. We have a Steamkin. All right. And then another Steamkin. And then a little Okay, cool. Sweet. All right. So that Lava Coil not being damaged really did cost us. As you can see, I don't know why it's in the deck. Um... This might be a good deck for fight with fire, to be honest with you. But I can ever get to the kicker. So it's really only ever going to be used for five damage to a creature. But then, like, the question is, do I really care about that? Do I want to bring in Lightning Mare? Because it can't be countered. But they don't really run counters that much in those style of decks. And if they do, they're usually negates. And he's not running blue creatures. Well, technically the Hydrocrasis has blue because it's green blue. So maybe, um, I guess it doesn't hurt to bring these in. I'll at least take out the, uh, part of me wants to keep the lava coils in. Banefire is definitely staying in. Or Kin Kindling Phoenix is definitely staying in. Uh, the Chain Whirlers seem completely useless in this matchup. So let me take all of those out. And I'm going to bring in... No. Um, I just feel very, like, empty-handed here. Like, what I need, I don't have. Part of me thinks Fight with Fire would be good in certain circumstances. Instead of Lava Coil. I think I just have to burn them down as fast as possible. I'm just going to go with this. I think this is right. Uh, we're definitely going to play first. Uh, I don't have a turn one play. Part of me thinks I need it. But I do have three mana. I think if... There's been too many times that I have mulliganed and gra gotten basically one land and never drew another land. So I'm actually going to keep this purely to play it safe. Uh, this is really good for us, but it doesn't help us review the deck. Okay. Going to keep the shock. Just in case. They do have a red mana now, which is unfortunate for us. Alright, this is probably going to be a wild growth. Not wild growth, that's a different game. It's a growth spiral <laughs> into another mana that. So, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm going to play a Pyromancer. Pure. Eh? Let's not. I'm going to force them to use their removal on one creature. I'm going to make it very awkward for them to do that. Okay. 4-4. Four, four. That's cool. I'm just thinking here if I should just go ahead and shock face or if I should use that for something else. I think I want to use it for something else. Um... Let's see if he trades. I think I take this trade. Yeah, I think I think I think you're supposed to trade this. And I'll just go ahead and end the turn. That's okay. I'm kind of playing a longer game than normal. Okay. And now I'm going to shock their face here. Uh, purely because I do not need necessarily another three. So they're back at three health. It, it, it's like we started over and they have two cards. But they have a lot of mana too. So we'll see how this goes. Now we're going to try to burn them down again. We'll see how this goes. That 
that's an interesting card. My guess is if they do have their three mana uh, clear board, they'll play it now. Because I'm representing uh, four damage on board and assuming, oh, okay, well, it's roughly game probably. Hopefully they trade with one and I'll lightning strike it to kill it. And then I'll Pyromance as well to the base. Okay, we do have a El Experimental Frenzy, which is really good purely because we're out of cards. Um, but I think I don't think that we're in a really good spot right now. I'm wondering if I made a mistake earlier and if I maybe play too slow. Um, I don't know. I just feel like my... Okay, that's okay. Not a big deal. Ooh, I oh, know we're gonna play Phoenix. That was a really good top draw. It's really good. This is gonna be very difficult for them to get rid of. And it's nice that this deck it runs at least one um, mythic. That's highly important. Nope, we're not going to attack because they can remove the 0-1 that's created. And of course I get a mountain. Bummer. And there goes the experimental frenzy. And that's about GG. But we'll, we'll keep going, just in case. No, nah, let's just go ahead. They're way too far ahead right now, and they have too much on board that I can't catch up. I don't have enough card draw mechanics, so. That was a bummer of a first game. All right, let's go. Let's go again. Okay, okay. Well, that's the worst thing I've ever seen. Oh. We're good. Man, pro. Okay. One thing I have noticed, I have played uh, games off, off video, of course, is that the 22 mana, you hit a lot of twos and threes, um, which is okay, that's good. Like that's what you want. I think the problem is that the the four cards that you're looking for aren't exactly always what you need. Um, I have no idea if that's just completely random circumstance. But, man, I'm drawing a lot of ones here. It could be a multitude of things. I'm, I'm not sure. But, the red deck wins version that I play consistently um, on ladder is much different than this. So I can easily death coil or uh, uh, lava coil this, and this makes a lot of sense in general. And I think I will. Uh, running that main deck, I guess, sometimes has a purpose. I don't know. Sometimes. Okay. Right on. Yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and play the frenzy now. Drawing a ton of mountains here. I got one on board too. Glad it's on board now, so I can draw it and get it away. That's seven lands. Okay. They didn't draw well. They did not draw well. That's cool. Um, they're running. 
See, I see. I don't. Oh, what? That's uh, man, this deck's so good. Five out of five. Nope. <sighs> I think I like that better. There we go. It's not horrible. Okay. <laughs> Let's bane fire for zero. So a little mono red v mono red. Mono red v mono red. Oh, that's a that's a good draw. We'll just go ahead and pyromancer. This will probably get shot. That's what it looks like. It's about to happen. No. Okay. Waiting for something else. Okay. All right. Not sure what was going on there. Um, going to attack first, seeing what might take place. I'm very curious. I assume that it would come soon or later. Okay. Right. We'll go ahead and play the Chain Whirler. This is going to be really good against decks that are uh, small, like a weenie deck, white weenies, or even a uh, mono red, mono blue. Okay. I'm going to see to make sure they don't concede. All right, cool. We're going to play a game. Definitely going to bring in the fire cannonade. Now, I'm not sure how many pirates they might play, so that might be a bad choice. Let me think about this. This diamond mare seems pretty good against a uh, mono red of the same type. Um, I'm going to bring in diamond mares, but I think is useless. Hmm. I don't think these two are good. We can get rid of those. I, I think I'm going to bring down the fiery cannonade too. I think we have plenty of removal. Part of me even wants to get rid of the lava coil and just play a minion based game and see if my shocks and lightning strikes are enough removal and just keep diamond mare up because that one three is really good against mono red. I think the one thing that it's going to get me if they have a deck that purely tries to ping a little bit to your face each turn, uh, maybe running a, can never remember the card name. Let me think. Let's go. I'm going to keep the lava coil. I'm going to try this. And actually, no, that's cheating. Let's just get rid of two firebrands. And call it a day. So, me getting rid of the lands would be cheating, in my opinion, because that's in MTV, MTG Arena, which I'll talk about a little bit more in the recommendation. The There's a land algorithm that helps you make sure that you always get at least a land. Uh, this is great. Okay, creatures you control get trampled. Seems like this is more of a let's kill them really quickly in a couple turns or so. I don't I don't really honestly know. So this lava coil seems like a great plan right now. We'll go ahead and attack. Okay, look at that. What you got? Risk factor. I'll take the fourth. So I'm about to do some things. Oh, we gotta pick the color red. Yes, sir. And we'll just go ahead and tap and get that going. 
Gutter Snatch is the card that I was thinking of the name. Couldn't think of it. What you gonna do? You gonna shock something? Got it. And then two my face, right? Aye. Well, unfortunately... Gonna have to play Experimental Frenzy here. Nope. And end. Just something that's obvious to uh, us is that we are getting a just a ton and I'll, just, I'll take the face I think I'm going to be able to heal off of this and I just don't want him to have cards I all right Good, I have a lava coil coming up too, so I'm gonna lava coil the gutter snipe. Pretty good. Shock is gonna get a couple more. It's a bummer. We're getting pretty low. It's okay though, he's out of steam here. So I think I've healed now for four here with the diamond mare. Good for us. Here, four for five. And we have lethal next turn. Right for six. All right, we have lethal next turn as well. This is good. Very good. All right. Hey, that's not too shabby. Makes a lot of sense on the diamond mare and whatnot. Uh, I think we're good. Let's go and review this sucker. All right, guys, we played some games. Uh, we played roughly two. We played four, but two people left. So what do you to do, right? Um, but I think all I needed was two to really understand the deck and give a good... I, I know Mono Red decently well. Um, this and Esper Control are roughly two of the most played decks that I, I usually play. And Soul Tie Midrange is also another one. Um, so I know these decks well enough to understand what's good and what's bad. And, and I will tell you that when I first look at this, my, my initial reaction is usually, um, this should be pretty good on paper. It looks really good. I think there is a massive, massive problem with this deck. And um, it's because it does not have this card here. Uh, and this is, in my opinion, what makes Mono Red so ridiculous right now. Light of the stage. I have no idea why this deck, uh, this card was not placed into this deck. Um, this this card right here will win you games very easily. And you saw it played in the very last game. Uh, but there is another deck, another <laughs> excuse me, another card. Uh, and always when I make these videos, I always forget card names, though I can easily name them. Oh, by the way, screw the critics. Animation looks legit. That's another card that I highly recommend should be in this deck, but we're going to get that in a minute. But here we go. Risk Factor. They're both on the same page, so this should be great. Uh, so the reason sometimes that you don't run Experimental Frenzy is because you're running Risk Factor. Now, this is a rare, so it depends on your budget if you want to be spending something like that. But th these three cards, Light Up the Stage, Risk, Risk Factor, and Screw the Critics, if those three were in this deck as it currently stands, um, I would make... I would say that we would be coming up maybe on a 4.5 deck. 4.4 4 out of 5 stars. 4.5 out of star, uh, 5 stars. However, because the lack of what I believe to be some of the most powerful mono red uh, cards in the game right now in standard, and honestly how unfun mono red is to play currently, in my opinion, uh, unless you somehow can get a runaway Steamkin, uh, coming on board pretty early in the game i'm gonna give this a 2.75 now i did 75 because i should have gave it a three but 2.75 is what i'd give this specific deck there are and again my my review process has is just twofold it these are challenger decks that you're going to play in real person with your friends now i'm reviewing them on arena because of how useful it is to and how easy it is to you know create the deck and then you just get to play it on the game but my goal is to say when i play my friends on friday night magic or when i play anybody 
for that matter, in real person up front, how fun and how good is the deck, period. That's what I'm looking for. And this deck is just not fun to play against nor play. And it is decent of a deck, but not in its current form. So 2.75 is what we're going to give it. Now let's jump into some things that I highly recommend that you do to make this deck a little bit better and jump that 2.75 maybe into the 3.5 to 4.0 category uh, when it comes to ooh, even 4.5 when it comes to um, usefulness uh, but and a little bit maybe more fun. All right, so we, we, we kind of went over the review. We talked a little bit about the deck and what we thought of it. Um, let's make it somewhat better, shall we? Now... The way in which we're going to do that is kind of, I, I kind of pro lead to that a little bit earlier, uh, it is adding light up the stage, skewer the critics, those two specific cards, and we have them right here. Let me just highlight them just in case, oh, look at that pretty artwork, um, and light up the stage. Light up the stage is a fantastic draw mechanic. It's just so good. And before I move any further, what I'm trying to do here is take what we already had and make something slightly better, not completely uh, create a brand new deck. And I will show you a brand new deck that you can easily build off of what this challenger deck offers, but it's going to cost a little bit more purely because there's some cards that you'll need. And uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Now, I did take out a goblin uh, chain whirler uh, and... I did take one of him out. I took out some other cards. I took out some of the cards and put them into the sideboard, as you can see. So just to run down what we have here, Firebrand, Lava Runner, Shock, Lightning Strike, uh, Runaway Steamkin, the Pyromancers, uh, Chain Whirler, Light of the Stage, Skewer the Critics, Wizards Lightning, and Experimental Frenzy. The goal here is we're trying to just condense a little bit about what we're trying to do instead of trying to say, hey, let's just in case let's put this card in we're all about face damage in the first game uh, i also dropped the man uh, mountain count to 20 now most of the time you don't want to do this at all this is somewhat of a very low mountain uh even in standard card play uh, but what i believe to be true is that mono red is one of the best decks to run a low mana cost on um, purely because of the way in which its mechanics work. You can also get mana from Runaway Steamkin, which is kind of what causes the Red Deck Wins mechanic to even come into being. Uh, this can burn very quickly an opponent, and if, worst case scenario, if you get the four mana, you can Experimental Frenzy, which is why we're keeping the two from the main Challenger deck. So that's kind of what we're running here in the main deck. On the side deck, we're going to get those Lava Coils, but we're going to go ahead and just bring in four completely. Also, we're going to keep those Lightning Mares again. I don't want to change too much. And it seemed to work pretty well against the Control Matchup if you could, if you saw that. you know, We can replace some of the burn that we might have and, and replace it with the Lightning Mare to make them use large-scale you know, um, large removal for this one card uh, because we can just con consistently tick it up to one extra damage. And four damage to the face per turn is actually a lot. We're keeping the um, Cannonade uh, purely because it's a great um, non-pirate removal for cards, uh, decks that we don't necessarily do well against, uh, like a Mono White Weenie. Uh, we have two risk factors. Now, this isn't a card that we're going to be adding as an addition. It's going to be two rares. So, again, if you don't have them, you don't have to, but... I don't think Risk Factor is a very expensive card to purchase. You'll have to check uh, MTG Goldfish or whatever you guys look at for that. Um, but this is purely for what I would call controller matchups or or matchups where your, your minions don't really do as much as you want them to do. Minions, your creatures. Uh, so having Risk Factor in here also is a great another card uh, mechanic. So what I would do in a control matchup or a mid-range matchup where my creatures are kind of useless, I will bring in risk factor instead to increase my damage output, but also helping me with, um, you know, just card card draw if they don't accept the damage. Then we have our Rekindling Phoenix and our Banefire in here because we want to keep those. The two cards are very fun. Uh, Banefire for control. And so is Phoenix. Both of these are control. These three cards can be all be control matchups or in yeah, Lightning Mare as well. Um, you would probably uh, 
probably my guess uh, could use lava coils in either mid range or aggro matchups. Same thing with cannonades. If you're running into a ton of aggro, you can always extra, you know, extravadite the deck, bringing in a, a you know another goblin chain whirler, uh, or if all your friends are you know all nothing but control, you can also change the deck a little bit to foresee what you might you know what you might play against in control matchups. But that's about it. Let me get now. We're gonna go check out one more deck. This deck specifically is completely different but it is somewhat similar and I just wanted to show you where you can get to by purchasing these challenger decks. Now you'll see that uh, the Firebrand, Lava Runner Shock, Lightning Strike, Runaway, Steamkin, Pyromancer, the Chain Whirler, uh, Wizard's Lightning, well we're about two of the Experimental Frenzies. Uh, we are, how did you get in here? That's silly. Um, though basically we're, we're sitting here and we are pretty close to this main deck from the cards that we've got from the challenger deck. We just need two experimental frenzies, a bunch of rare land drops, and, uh, I believe light up the stages that shouldn't be terribly more expensive. And on the sideboard, we already have, we have lava coils. The cinder vines is the big one that we'll need to purchase. Maybe some treasure maps. Uh, another uh, goblin chain whirler. There's our bane fire that we had needed. Uh, everything else is somewhat cheaper, but this deck specifically is 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 in the same vein what the challenger deck is trying to do. However, I believe that this one is one of the top tier versions of what we're trying to do, and it all involves these cards here. This card right here is the kicker against control matchups and the reason is when you cast a non-creature spell it does a damage to the player um and then you can also destroy enchantments and artifacts by paying a mana and that does two damage to the permanence controller the reason why this is so good against control is twofold they play enchantments and three every single time you play a non-creature against a control matchup and this by the way this this happens um, when the spell is cast. So if your spell gets countered, the one damage still takes place. This is fantastic against certain matchups that do not allow you to play minions. You, you cannot keep minions on the board. So, okay, let's do this thing. Let's bring in a Bane Fire. Let's bring in maybe some of the Cinder Vines and maybe some of these uh, Collision Colossus. And what we'll do instead is we'll just try to take away your life for every single time your opponent casts a non-creature spell. So I play a lightning strike. They counter it. Well, that counter does one damage to their face. Now, if it's an absorb, you know, there's a net plus two that they still receive. But the purpose is, in control matchups, a control matchup player is drawing cards. They are trying to uh, gain more value by playing very slowly on certain, some mechanisms. A lot of times they're playing until the end of the turn to you know, play Chemister's Insight, to draw multiple cards. Every single time they do that, minus one to their face. And that's extremely important in a deck that is literally trying to kill you as fast as possible. Bringing this card into control matchups is superb and very, very valuable. All right, friends, that's about it. That wraps up our review. We talked a little bit about the deck, what the deck was ranked, uh, and what how we can improve it. If you guys uh, enjoyed what you saw, give me a thumbs up. I always appreciate that. Also, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that little bell on the side to be reminded whenever these new reviews pop up. I got two more coming before April 12th, before the launch. If you're really interested in seeing all those, stick around. It's going to be a lot of fun. Friends, until next time.